Hey, you may be wondering who I am. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Johnson Vu. Hello, guys. I just wanted to make this video to talk about it was my second video. So just doing a little voiceover. There is my laptop right there. I got a lot of talks that I just wanted to fill you upon as I walk you through my full day routine. I'll be honest, this vlog stuff is really like separating my time. Right on. Feel your comfort. You're that. Feeling down. Feeling stress. Good. You just need to embrace it. It is July the 29th, and what that basically means is I have personally now just hit the first anniversary of running this YouTube channel. So if you go back and look to my very first public video, it was uploaded on the 29th where it's titled First Things First Introductions. Now, obviously I've come a long way since then. Um, you know, plenty of highs and lows, plenty of um, doubts along the way. I'll be lying to you if I didn't have that. So overall, this channel has gone a extremely long way these past 12 months. And not just for myself, but also for my life, my confidence and kind of a little bit of my finances as well but that's not the focus for today's video today i just actually wanted to recap all the lessons that i gained over these past 12 months and kind of hand it down to you basically giving you 12 months of experience um, and wisdom and insight ahead just for you in this video so here are five lessons that i learned from 12 months of running a youtube channel so if you are already looking to start a personal brand but you don't know how to start, this video is for you. And of course, by the way, with these lessons that I'm gonna give you today, they don't just apply to the YouTube channel. They also apply to life as well. And I'll go through that with every single lesson here. All right, so the first lesson that I'm going to give you is lesson one. Imperfection is key when you start. You learn as you go. Now, what this basically means is that when you start, you're not gonna have it all figured out. You're not going to know everything about the, you know, how to build a personal brand from zero to one million. Everyone's journey is really all different. But the one thing, the one thing I cannot stress enough is just starting. You don't need to have the perfect video. You don't need to have the perfect thumbnail. You don't need to have the perfect SEO, editing or setting or whatever it is. You know, when you start, you don't need the perfect high production, multi six figure um, production value uh, studio and setup. Okay. When I started, I started with my phone, a broken mic and really, really poor lighting. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You go back, if you go back to my first video, it is in shambles. I don't have the confidence. I do not have not even a 10th of the confidence I have now. I didn't even have all this equipment that I already have now. And I'm you know very fortunate to have that. But back then, I didn't start with a professional camera. And of course, guys, you know this. When you start off, of course you're not gonna be good at it. Of course you're not gonna know everything about it. But this is a thing where you apply. You apply, you grow, you learn, you put in the reps, you keep on consistently uploading, and that is what gets you the experience. That's what gets you the knowledge. That's what gets you the results. So of course, like if you were going to the gym, you're not going to bench 100 kilograms when you first enter the gym. No, of course, you're gonna start off with, you know, the baby weights, you know, one, two, three, four, five kilograms, maybe on each side of the barbell, or maybe you just wanna do bicep curls and, you know, build your arms from there. But of course, no one just starts off like Mr. Olympia. So the point is, again, imperfection is key, and I want you to learn as you go. And this kind of parlays to the next lesson, which is, just make one improvement every single video, no matter how big or small. Basically, when I started, my mindset was just 1% improvement. Improve one thing, no matter how big or small. No one had to notice it. No one had to see it went from, um, you know, like horrible exporting or like incorrect, you know, ratio to black bars and LUTs and, and all this stuff and grading over. No. All I did was just on the next video, I added music. 
on the next video i added some sound effects on the next video i added an intro on the next video i added an outro but as i've said just improve one thing every single video with every single video you upload just make it so there's one thing that's different about it yet again no matter how big or small and when you can do that it compounds by the time you make 10 videos you have 10 improvements by the time you make 50 100 videos you have 50 100 videos and i promise you by the time you get to that your videos will look unrecognizable from your first one and so you'll be able to see and go back you know whenever you want you know how much progress you've made each time and when you can do this you don't try and overstuff yourself with so much stress to try and learn something you know this learning process should be it should be fun it should be minimal and with all these small improvements try and just make yourself a little bit more satisfied with each video whether it's yet again improving the seo improving the editing improving the thumbnail maybe changing the software maybe changing the software you use from like canva to photoshop if that's the case then yeah that's fine so long as you can do that the power of compounding is going to significantly improve the quality of your videos within you know however however many times you upload a week how many times you upload you know a month but no doubt within a year by the time you get to 12 months where i am now your videos are going to be unrecognizable literally if you want proof go back to my first video it is nowhere in comparison to the videos i make now so i hope that point is clear now the next one isn't necessarily a content creation so much because it applies to life as well which is lesson number three stay in your own lane i see so many times people try and mock someone else try and be someone else try and do this and that and listen there's nothing wrong with that you can take inspirations here again if you go back to my video i think one of my first few videos was like what was my video inspiration and in there i talk about um, a music video i talk about some of my favorite creators and trying to mimic their stuff and you know at this point now yeah my videos have you know their videos have a strong relation to what how you know the style that i do in my videos but no doubt i stayed in my own lane even though i talked about you know kind of the creative insight on that side and gave you you know a look into what i was thinking when i was building the channel all that i wanted to do was the very first thing which is just my policy on the video which was to focus on my own story to document my journey and of course up to this point now this has been the entire reason and the entire kind of philosophy behind what i upload you know yes i've done a you know a few videos on you know like the g1 reviews like i have on right now um a review on digital launchpad but all these things in a way had a relation to what i did but even if not still 90 percent of my videos is just about me it's boring it's vlogs you know people don't really catch on too much especially when it's the start of my journey I, you know, I don't have too much going for me right now but no doubt I just focused on my own story and I didn't think about you know what was this person doing what was you know this other person they did this and this and that and yet again you can take inspiration that's fine that's absolutely fine but don't get so stuck up comparing yourself to you know other competitors this and that this is your own journey right which yeah honestly just to keep your own peace just so then you don't feel like quitting from youtube sometimes just don't compare to other people just focus on yourself be grateful for every single milestone that you cross you know such as 100 subscribers 50 subscribers maybe a thousand subscribers maybe you get good growth and you even get one of the it's like the silver play button and the gold play button that's great congrats for you but just be grateful for that and don't compare yourself to someone else who's simply in their own lane you know everyone else has their different timing and obviously life is not the same for everyone you know it all happens in due time for each of our lives so just take that on board and so lesson number four is don't obsess over uploads don't obsess over uploading every you know three or four days you know all this stuff and not being able to get up a video on time I've learned this very, very recently. As you know, I uploaded a video about, you know, doing a content scheduler just because content creation, you know, providing content for this channel has been sometimes 
you know, made me feel guilty. It makes me feel like I've been falling behind in my work. And I also just had to evaluate, you know, what's the most important work that I have to do, you know, for this year, for this month, for this week, for this day. And truthfully, content creation is not the highest ROI task. It's not the tasks that moves, you know, the needle forward for my for my life, basically, not just for this channel. I've said it before, but if I want to improve the quality of my content, I need to switch up my life. You know, I'm in these four walls of my room all day. You don't really see me too much anywhere else, you know, maybe outside sometime, but overall it's fairly much all the same. And so if I ever want to change my environment, if I ever want to, you know, provide you guys with new stuff, you know, such as this, you know, going out places, I know I haven't really done that, you know, on this channel. So that means I need to work on what's most important to me, which is my business. And when I can, you know, get a income from my business, start getting paid in that, I can start showing you guys what I'm buying, what I'm doing to improve. And eventually, you know, maybe on to bigger things such as like, moving out, getting a car, etc. all these things. You know, all these things are for the future, but that means I need to worry about my business, not my content creation. So don't obsess over uploads, don't obsess over, you know, getting it out every three days and schedule uploading it and this and that and having it to a standard. You can worry about that when you're way bigger and there's an expectation for your channel, but things happen, circumstances pop up, you know, events happen, delays happen, interruptions happen. That's life. But don't try and also keep your content creation to, you know, chain, kind of chain you down to a certain, you know, rate that you have to do, especially when your channel is small. Quite honestly, you know, yet again, look at my channel. Not a lot of people really care. And that's, that's totally fine, but that's the truth. So honestly, you can care about consistent uploads, but don't obsess over it. Don't obsess over a quality, don't obsess over a frequency. Just upload when you can, when you want, and hey, yet again, if you have that space, then sure, stick to that frequency, but don't, you know, you're not a robot, okay? You're a human being, things happen, you know, things pop up and that's fine, but don't feel guilty over it, you know, kind of like I did. So with that last lesson, it kind of parlays again into the fifth lesson, which is don't worry about the metrics. When you are starting off, you quite literally start from zero subscribers, 10 subscribers, hell, maybe even hundred subscribers. I've seen channels out there that don't even upload content and they have more subscribers than me. You know, they, they do all these things, but you know, when they start off, like don't expect your channel to have, uh, don't have like KPIs for your, your channel and don't worry about, uh, click through rate and average view duration and this and that most of the times your videos and the videos you're going to put out especially with the quality of it i'll be honest you youtube probably won't even have enough views or you know people watching to even create the metrics and the analytics for you to look at you know it's cool to look at all these things like oh where, where it dropped off on a review or where it dropped off on a video that you've done but most of the times it's all kind of the same you know, you're a small channel and truthfully, you're not going to have too many diehard fans at the start, but this is something you build. And so more so, you know, forget about the metrics. You're a beginner, but honestly worry about how can you improve the quality of your channel? How can you improve the quality of your content? How do you make your channel valuable? You know, how do you build up that portfolio, that value, that track record, that history for your channel? If you can figure out how to do that, focus on that. Yet again, forget the fucking metrics, just focus on the process. Focus on the process of improving your craft and honing that in every single day. And yet again, it, it mixes again with the other lessons that I've just said, you know, just improve one thing at a time. And don't worry about anyone else. Imperfection is key. And that is exactly how you should play when you start off as a channel. Yet again, you don't need to have, um, you know, like Eman, Eman quality production videos, uh, you know, 4K camera with a, a slider, this and that. Like, obviously, you know, most of the times for 99% for of you, you probably can't afford that anyways, right? So you, most of the times you're filming on, you know, a cheap light or a cheap phone, cheap tripod, and that's fine. That's where you start from. 
So honestly, just stop looking at the metrics and just think about how can you provide maybe more value for your uh, for your audience. How can you make your videos shorter? You know, how do you how do you want your videos to be? What kind of style do you want to take on? You know, consider these things lightly, but yet again, don't don't worry about the metrics. Don't worry about how many likes you get, uh, how many positive comments you get, um, because a lot of that comes away. And when you put those things you know, too much that you care about them, guess what happens? You end up becoming slave to it. And just kind of as a last note for this lesson, this one is especially, especially a bit tricky because truthfully in today's economy, I personally think that, um, you know, with the content side of things, people do not care so much about necessarily the best editing and this and that. It's more so about actually creating genuine connections with your audience because you can do all this retention editing and do all this stuff all this nice looking stuff um, to try and you know retain editing but sometimes people forget to actually have a soul in their videos to have character in their videos and personally for me that's that's why i've gone this route this slower route of kind of taking it slow but also building my character and showing you guys what am i like what's my personality you know, who I am and you know where am I at in my journey so even if you think about how sales is anymore it's not so much you know direct advertising direct marketing you know sell me this sell me that especially honestly that's the negative rhetoric of you know the negative idea of you know today's economy take you know something like courses for example when you start selling super super hard on a product and you know trying to hype it up so much and, and say all these things it makes you look desperate. It makes you look like you're hard selling. And I'm gonna be honest, there's a saying that goes out there. People do not like to be sold to. At this point, you know, selling is not just put a product in front of someone and say, you know, list the benefits and this, that. You need to actually start thinking about the audience and what they want. You need to start thinking about building a genuine connection with them and actually saying, you know, hey, um, I'm doing this for this and this and this and this reason, not because oh I just want to make money from a course and you know I just want to sell it and, and this and that and it's like then again like if you think about how you know the economy is shaped now on the internet, it's really about building connections. It's really about providing value. That's that's one of the biggest things that I personally I do agree with, which is yeah you should be building value. Yeah you should be building genuine connections and. You know showing people basically just showing people that you simply care and that you don't just use people just for their views or their attention and then oh like oh you're just a uh, kind of just like thinking they're this you know they're just this number in the system and you know hey i'm gonna funnel these people i'm, I'm gonna make money off these people it, like just be really careful of those people who talk in that way and just say oh i'm gonna monetize your audience and this and that and it's like, to me, if I saw an outreach message like that, and I, I'm be honest, I actually already have. I've received a couple of outreach messages from um, people offering, you know, services for video editing, SEO, thumbnails, and yeah, this makes sense. My videos are not up to the very best that they could be, but, but yeah, I've received messages like those, and they talk exactly like that, just trying to sell me on this benefit, like, oh, you'll get more views and and this and that, and it's like. No, I actually care about, hey, like building a genuine connection, being authentic, being honest and transparent on this channel. I've basically shown you my entire fucking life. There's really nothing to hide. If someone were to watch this video right now, I basically tell you all my motivations, my values, um, what I have. Like I've shown you guys everything. And that's the philosophy. That's the policy on my channel. So honestly, if there was a good outreach message that I would genuinely recommend, is just be careful of those people who say oh i'm just going to monetize your audience and i'm going to i'm going to sell to them through this funnel and this and that and then uh, convert them no maybe honestly a green flag is if someone says hey i want to help your audience you know, make money online i want to you know help your audience engage more on your channel you know those kind of things genuinely feel authentic they feel they feel human that's what's lacking today is a human touch because yet again all people care about is yet again the metrics the 
the fucking subscriber count and all these things honestly like all these things are genuine vanity metrics until you can see some utility in it you know but if anything to bring it back it's like just a red flag is someone who constantly just wants to sell and a green flag is someone who understands human touch human interaction and creating a real and genuine bond between the business and the customer so yeah guys that is my five lessons that i've learned from 12 months of starting my channel i hope you guys have enjoyed and i will see you later